Welcome to the Foresight Health Roundup podcast, Foresight Health's podcast series for healthcare revolutionaries. Outcomes matter, customers count, and value rules. Hello again, everyone. This is Dave Burdick, news editor at Foresight Health. It is Thursday, July 6th. Welcome to the second half of the year. I hope everyone had a fun and safe 4th of July and still has both eyes and both arms. If you don't get that reference, you really do need to listen to last week's show. Whoa. Fireworks, obviously, are a public health hazard, but there's absolutely no way we're going to ban them in this country. We just love blowing up things too much. And there's your segue into today's topic. How much do we need to blow up the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention? To answer that question, our resident public health and munitions experts, Dave Johnson, founder and CEO of Foresight Health, and Julie Merchantson, partner at Transformation Capital. Hi, Dave. Hi, Julie. How are you guys doing this morning? Dave? I'm feeling really spiffy. I'm wearing my new favorite T-shirt from the revenue cycle management company, Fathom. It has cartoon drawings of some of the more outrageous diagnostic codes. Burned by fire while water skiing, bit by a pig, bizarre personal appearance. Uh, I wish I could model it for you, but I will someday. (laughs) And I'll think I'll be using some of those codes. That's great, Dave. Thanks. Julie, how are you? I am well. I spent a very interesting 4th of July with someone who I really love and appreciate, who is also a science denier. So I've been going through a lot in preparation for this discussion today, thinking about, God, what does it take in America to actually do well by people? So I'm ready. Wow. Frontline experience. That's great. Thanks, Julie. Now, before we talk about the future of the CDC, I wanted to ask you about the future of the healthcare system. Now, there's a narrow topic for you, (laughs) but we'll limit it to the second half of the year. Dave, we have six months left in 2023. Give me one healthcare prediction that you think will come true before the year ends. Operating losses keep piling up at many large nonprofit health systems. I predict we'll see at least one technical default at a major nonprofit system. A technical default occurs when a borrower still makes its debt service payment but violates a bond covenant like debt service coverage. If and when that happens, it will be interesting to see how the tax exempt bond markets react. At a minimum, risk premiums will increase. Stay tuned. Okay, we'll watch for that. Thanks, Dave. Julie, assuming you didn't blow up your crystal ball, tell me one big thing that you think will happen in healthcare before we say goodbye to 2023. Well, I would love to think that we're going to see another digital health company go public, but I'm not going to predict that. (laughs) I think that we will see another, I'll call it a mega merger of health systems you know, to create a very large system but before the year is out. Got it. Kind of like a Geisinger, Kaiser kind of a deal, huh? Yeah, or more like an advocate atrium kind of deal. Hmm, okay. You're on record. It's harder to sink an aircraft carrier. That's the theory of a lot of these mergers behind a lot of these mergers. Yeah, makes sense. Well, I'm more of a news and second guessing kind of a guy, but I'll stick my neck out this time. I think Congress will lift the ban on physician-owned hospitals. That's my prediction. I think an apple will fall on someone's head and they'll say, hmm, if hospitals can own doctors, why can't doctors own hospitals? Fair is fair, right? Uh, So we'll see what happens there. We need the competition. Okay, let's talk about the CDC. As you know, Dr. Rochelle Walensky announced her resignation as CDC director in early May, Her last day on the job was June 30th. Walensky took over as CDC director in January 2021 after the tortured tenure of Dr. Bob Redfield during the Trump administration. That was a disaster. Three weeks ago, President Biden appointed Dr. Mandy Cohen to replace Walensky. Uh, Cohen worked for CMS as chief operating officer. She was the secretary of the state health department in North Carolina, and she's the executive vice president of Allidaid and CEO of Allidaid Solutions. Allidaid is the value-based care technology company that works with primary care practices across the country. It was founded by Dr. Farzad Mastashari, 
the former ONC director. What a small healthcare world we do live in. I'm assuming Cohen will give up her Allidate gig when she takes over at the CDC this month. So there's your chronology of events. Now let's talk substance. Dave, I have two questions for you. One, what grade would you give Walensky as CDC director and why? Well, I guess it's two questions. Though, So three, what does Cohen have to do as CDC director to get a better grade than Walensky? You know, it is a small world, Dave. Farzad and I are members of Amitabh Chandra's Healthcare Leadership Council at Harvard. We have a meeting next week in Boston, and I'm hoping and expecting to see him there. Maybe I'll tell him about the podcast. But back to the main topic, before I give Rochelle Walensky a grade on her CDC tenure, I'm going to do a short three-question quiz with the two of you. I'm going to take a page from Julie's book. Uh-oh. Here we go. So question one, how broken was CDC when Walensky took its helm? Not at all, somewhat, or completely? Dave? I'm going completely. Oh, my God. Train wreck. Okay. (laughs) Secondly, did the public's trust in the CDC increase or decrease or remain the same during her tenure? Uh, I'll say decrease. Is this a rhetorical question? (laughs) Decrease. (laughs) Okay. And then the final one, how well prepared is the U.S. as a nation for the next pandemic? Not at all, somewhat, or completely. Oh, okay. You know what? If it happened tomorrow, I don't think we're prepared at all. Yeah, I would go somewhere between not at all and somewhat, somewhat prepared, but on the weaker side of what that means. Yeah. Um, Well, my answers match the two of yours, not surprisingly. Completely broken, lower public trust. And Julie, I'm a little bit more with you, somewhat prepared, but forgetting quickly. The agency's failures under Walensky to communicate effectively regarding the origins and spread of COVID, as well as not really providing timely advice for treating the disease, were absolutely catastrophic. Prior to COVID, CDC was the gold standard in the world for public health organizations, and the information that it issued was was taken as gospel. Boy, have we come a long way since then, and not in a good way. Well, that would lead me to give Walensky an F, but at the same time, she led a massive effort to restructure CDC and refocus its mission on protecting advancing health. So... I think we have to give Walensky an incomplete and we have to see how our moving forward reform program at the CDC goes. It has a lot of potential, but it's obviously in its very early stages. So a a pretty bumpy ride for the outgoing CDC director. Regarding Mandy's move to CDC, it's both baffling and potentially inspiring to me. Baffling because I'd rather see her talents applied to payment reform at CMS America won't change the way it delivers health care until it changes the way we pay for health care. The Biden administration has made little progress in meaningful payment reform to date. Mandy Cohen could actually turbocharge that if she were over at CMS, but she's not. She's at the CDC. And it's potentially inspiring because we cannot achieve a healthier America without a fully functioning, integrated and aligned CDC. It's going to take a village to reverse America's declining health status. Maybe Mandy Cohen is exactly the right person to try to make that part of the equation happen. Since Julie knows Mandy really well, I'm very curious to hear, Julie, how you answer these questions. Add it, Dave. Thank you. An incomplete and optimistic. Thanks. Julie, any questions for Dave? Well, Dave, with this CDC moving forward plan, which was really extensive, What's the most important change in your mind CDC can make to really shift its image for the public? Oh, you're right about how broad that was. There were eight priorities and they covered the waterfront. But interestingly, the first three focused on communications. Number one, sharing scientific findings and data faster. Number two, translating science into practical, easy to understand policy. And number three, prioritize public health communications, it's going to be impossible to regain the public trust without speaking and living the truth. And the CDC has a long way to go to earn the public's trust. 
it starts with doing the right things and then speaking honestly, clearly, and consistently with the American people about what they're doing and why they're doing it. With the public's trust, anything is possible, even a healthier America. Without it, I'm afraid we're going to continue on this road to ever higher spending and sicker populations, lower productivity. Uh, that's a vision no one wants for America. But that's the challenge before Mandy. Yeah, trust is key. Thanks, Dave. Julie, the same three questions for you. One, what grade would you give Walensky and why? And two, what are you looking for from Cohen that will earn her a better grade than Walensky? <laughs> okay, take a seat. Okay, we're ready. <laughs> so I would give Walensky more of a solid kind of B+. plus. Because she walked into an agency, as Dave pointed out, that was under pressure, hadn't seen in its 180-year history, and intense scrutiny and that put it into, frankly, a huge identity crisis. And when you look at what the CDC has been through over the last 20 years, it has dealt with some big diseases like H1N1 and COVID that have required deep science. But coming from this deep science background, this explosion it's seen in chronic diseases like diabetes, cancer, maternal mortality, all of that, not only requires a science, but massive like public-private coordination and entirely new technology and processes in a very distributed way. So this agency is being asked to do things it frankly wasn't really set up to do. So... In my mind, Walensky was just starting to clean up the messes that were made before her and kind of hidden under the rug. And I'm with Dave. Maybe she would have gotten a higher grade, if not for some mistakes along the way. But the CDC moving forward plan was bold and extensive and frankly, super revealing. And if you haven't read it, you should, because it doesn't just apply to the CDC. It applies to a lot of government agencies. So I, I really want to give Walensky a higher grade than an incomplete. So for Cohen, I looked back at some of her accomplishments as the head of DHS for North Carolina to try to figure out what I expect from her. And first and foremost, you know, she walked in criticizing the House of Representatives 2019-21 budget arguing that massive cuts were going to harm the people of North Carolina by potentially impacting everything from health inspections at restaurants to safety of drinking water and CPS, et cetera. So if she could do one thing, she could really help us all understand where and when the spend is going to be most valuable to drive health outcomes. She has that really, you know, incredible purview and experience to be able to do that in a way that, frankly, very few scientists who have led CDC in the past could do. As Dave said, her Medicaid experience sets her up to do some pretty incredible things when it comes to health equity in CDC. She could be doing a lot more in the coordination role that she's going to take on across government agencies here. So I'm hopeful there. She spearheaded the Healthy Opportunities Initiative, which provided Medicaid enrollees with housing, food, transportation, all sorts of societal support mechanisms. So if she can take what she learned from that experience to inform CDC's role in connecting social needs with the healthcare apparatus and thinking about public health, I mean, she could do some incredible things in the way that we think about what public health means and what the services look like. She implemented an opioid action plan that actually helped North Carolina see a decline in overdose deaths for the first time over a decade. So could she just take that and apply it nationwide? <laughs> that seems like not low-hanging fruit. I won't call it that, but maybe a win. And as Dave said, her communications during COVID in North Carolina were amazing. She got kids back to school and people back to work faster than many other states. And <laughs> She's a Democrat, so that doesn't quite align with many other states, and I'll just say our issues. And, I mean, the list goes on. Honestly, she understands the role of technology, and she's savvy about evolving innovations and business models. She definitely understands bipartisan politics. And I think, perhaps most importantly, she's an operator, even though she comes from the policy world and she's a doctor. And the CDC is undergoing you know, like this is a, this is pretty much like a full house renovation and needs a strong operator to get it through it. 
She knows how to get the best bang for our public health buck. That's great. Thanks, Julie. Dave, any questions for Julie? Well, that was fantastic, Julie. And I know you know Mandy very well. It actually wouldn't surprise me if at some point you interviewed her for your Foresight Health series on women leaders in healthcare. I almost can't think of anybody better for you to interview. I should. Yeah. Big picture, the three of us, you, Dave, and me, believe we need more public health and less health care in the United States of America. Given that, why do you think Mandy took the position as CDC director? And what can we reasonably expect from her in terms of advancing broader and more effective public health services? Yeah, you know, it's certainly interesting timing in this election cycle for someone as strong as Mandy to take this position. But I will say that she, of anyone, really sees the need for someone with more public health experience to be able to mend CDC. I think she and Biden probably definitely see that she has been very well respected by leaders on both sides of the aisle. She was really well known for convening and working across the aisle very proactively in North Carolina. And, you know, historically, she's grown up in uh, policy and, and had to do that. So I think she has the right profile to be able to earn the trust. She's a very, she's very focused on trust. And she believes that the recipe she used in North Carolina really did create trust. So if she can take that and and create trust at CDC, she will have spent as long as she can be in this role, you know, time well spent trying to really implement this plan that Walensky put in place. And it's not like I know Mandy super well, but this woman is amazing. And she will go on to do incredible things to lead our country in areas of health that because of the multitude of experiences she's had. I mean, look, she's worked for an innovative solution company effectively with Farzad for the last year and a half. She's now had boots on the ground and been in more of a startup role than she's ever been. So the experiences she's had put her in such an incredible position to be able to lead in a very different way than leaders we've had at CMS and HHS and others along the way. Yeah. Can't beat real world experience. That's great. Thanks, Julie. I don't know, Colin, but she'll get an A from me if she can keep all the science denying crazies out there from getting us all killed. (laughs) And maybe that starts with the friend you uh, spoke with over the uh, long holiday weekend, Julie. It might. God, I hope so. (laughs) Well, here's my glasses, not only half full, but up to the brim is this is just prep work for Mandy Cohen's role as Secretary of HHS in the second Biden era. Ah, another prediction. All right. That's great. Thanks, Dave. That would be great. Okay, let's briefly talk about other big healthcare news this week. Wasn't all bad, was it? Julie, what else happened this past week that's worth noting? Well, this is pretty obscure and it's not entirely news, but it's a good little nugget of just a reminder of how our system works. You know, I have been talking with a million I shouldn't say that. I've been talking with a few health plans and everyone's obsessed with the GLP-1 drugs and trying to get their arms around what to do about them. And I saw a little snippet that Nova Nordisk spent $11 million on 457,000 meals to educate doctors and other prescribers about its portfolio of GLP-1 drugs. (laughs) And this all comes from some data released from CMS. So, you know, we still function through the world of pharma buying prescriptions and and buying eyeballs. So just remember (laughs) where we are. Yeah, no, that's a good one to file away. I'm also seeing a lot of studies all of a sudden on body mass index and how that's not an indicator of health. Yeah, file that one away too. Dave, any other news that popped up on your radar? My big news for the week continues along the line of my head exploding over the size of the revenue cycle management business. Grandview Research, the only company I've seen produce a report on revenue cycle management, is out with their 2023 report. 
And they unbelievably say that the size of the revenue cycle management business, the outsourced revenue cycle management business, has more than doubled since last year from $140 billion to $307 billion, still growing at 10% a year. So by 2020 or by 2030, it will be almost $660 billion as opposed to $308 billion last year. It just goes to show nobody has any idea how big this market really is. It reminds me of the Einstein quote on compounding interest, that it's the eighth wonder of the world. Those who understand it earn it. Those who don't pay it, we're on the wrong end of compounding interest in RCM management as a society. <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> well, thanks, David. Thanks, Julie. That is all the time we have for today. If you'd like to learn more about the topics we discussed on today's show, please visit our website at foresighthealth.com. And don't forget to tell a friend about the Foresight Health Roundup podcast. Subscribe now and don't miss another segment of the best 20 minutes in healthcare. Thanks for listening. I'm Dave Berta for Foresight Health.